Dysgraphia is a neurological disorder of written expressions that impairs writing ability and fine motor skills. It is a learning disability that affects children and adults and interferes with practically all aspects of the writing process including spelling, legibility, word spacing, sizing and expression. Okay, now what is dyspraxia? A person with dyspraxia has problems with movement, coordination, judgment, processing, memory and some other cognitive skills. Dyspraxia also affects the body's immune and nervous system. Dyspraxia is also known as motor learning difficulties, perceptual motor dysfunction, and developmental coordination disorder. According to the National Center for Learning Disabilities, individuals with dyspraxia have difficulties in planning and completing fine and gross motor tasks. This can range from simple motor movements such as waving goodbye to more complex ones like sequencing steps to brush one's teeth. Okay, first let's start with uh, causes of dyspraxia. The exact causes of dyspraxia isn't known. It could have to do with uh, variations in the way neurons in the brain develop. This affects the way the brain sends message to the rest of the body. That could be why it's hard to plan a series of movements and then carry them out successfully. Dyspraxia is more common in males than females. It also tends to run in the family. Dysgraphia. If dysgraphia appears in childhood, it's usually the result of a problem with orthographic coding. It's in an aspect of working memory that allows you to permanently remember written words and the way your hands or fingers must move to write those words. Now, let's see. Dyspraxia symptoms in children. If a baby has dyspraxia, they might notice delayed milestones such as lifting the head, rolling over and sitting up, though children with this condition may eventually reach early milestones on time. The signs and symptoms can include unusual body positions, general irritability, sensitivity to loud noises, feeding and sleeping problems, a high level of movement of the arms and legs, other symptoms of dyspraxia may include difficulty concentrating. Children who have problems with dyspraxia may have a poor attention span and find it difficult to focus on one thing for more than a few minutes. They also have difficulty in following instructions and copying information. They may do better at school in a one-to-one -one situation than in a group, so they can be guided to work. Children with dyspraxia has difficulty playing with toys that involve good coordination such as stacking bricks. They also have difficulty learning to eat with cutlery such as using forks or spoons. Children with dyspraxia have difficulties in playground activities such as hopping, jumping, running and catching or kicking a ball. They often avoid joining in because of their lack of coordination and may find physical education difficult. And lastly, they also have difficulties in writing, drawing and using scissors. Their handwriting and drawings may appear scribbled and less developed compared to other children of their age. Look out for these signs if you suspect your child may have dysgraphia. Here are the most important dysgraphia symptoms. Inability to get their thoughts down on paper, messy or illegible handwriting, an awkward and tight grip on the pencil and awkward body position, has trouble spacing between words and forming the shapes of the letters, unable to pay proper attention, has trouble with trying to organize the words from left to right, has difficulty staying within the margins, has trouble with other fine motor skills such as holding a fork, tying shoelaces, Inability to spell correctly and sometimes mixes uppercase and lowercase letters, unable to hold the pencil properly or use scissors the correct way. Writes incomplete sentences. Dyspraxia and dysgraphia in ADLs, IADLs, social participation, play and school. Here are some of the effects that we have gathered in ADLs for dyspraxia. 
tends to eat in sloppy manner due to poor dynamic balance. Unable to complete bathing activity independently due to limited multi-step motor tasks. Motor planning impairment leads to difficulty to walk from one place to another and continually brushing one side of their mouth. For dysgraphia, difficulty in discriminating tools between comb and toothbrush tends to misplace spectacle due to poor memory. Trouble choosing appropriate outfit according to weather due to lack of awareness. Trouble in manipulating food inside the mouth due to diminished oral manipulation skills. IADLs for dyspraxia. Difficulty making transitions from one step to another during meal preparation due to limited multi-step planning. Faces difficulty answering phone calls due to limited automatic vocabulary. For dysgraphia, trouble to communicate fluently due to impaired organizing thoughts. Unable to recognize unexpected hazardous situations due to poor awareness of surrounding. In school, for dyspraxia, faces difficulty to cut paper accurately due to lack of fine motor skills, poor academic achievement due to lack of attention, trouble pencil grip due to poor gross motor skills. For dysgraphia, poor spelling and grammar due to lack of performance on attention tasks. Having confusion in recognizing simple letters due to poor basic concepts. Has slow writing speed due to dexterity deficits. In play for dyspraxia, unable to play blocks and puzzles due to lack of eye hand coordination. Aggressively or destructive in play due to diminished body awareness. Dysgraphia, unable to follow games rules due to concentration deficits. In social participation, for dyspraxia, tends to be clumsy and stumble upon people due to poor imbalance control. Unable to participate with peers due to lack of self-confidence. For dysgraphia, struggles to come up with the right word and answer questions. Psychological assessment can provide specific information about the child's strength and weakness that can be used to support treatment from occupational therapists. The first assessment that OT used to address learning disabilities is Peabody Developmental Motor Skills, second edition. PDMS2 is composed of six subtests that measure interrelated abilities in early motor development. It was designed to access gross and fine motor skill in children from birth through five years of age. The subtest is reflex, stationary, locomotion, object manipulation, grasping, and visual motor integration. Second is Pediatric Evaluation of Disability Inventory. The PD measures functional status in the domain of self-care, mobility, and social function across the following three measurement scales. Part 1. Functional scale includes 197 items of functional scale. Each item is read 0 to 1 for performance capability. Part 2. 
caregiver assistant includes 20 items of complex functional activities. Each item is rate 0 until 5 for assistance level. Part 3 is modification includes 20 items of complex functional activities rate N for no modification. C. Child oriented. R. Rehabilitation equipment or E. Extensive modification. Scores are distributed from 0 until 100 with higher scores representing greater functionality. Scale scores can be used for children of all ages because scale scores are not adjusted for age. Okay, next is the show handwriting screening for early handwriting development, ASHH. The ACH is one of the non-standardized assessment tools to determine the cause of handwriting dysfunction or writing problems among children aged of 3 to 7 years. The ACH provides a simple checklist for the purpose of storing assessment data. The time taken for the show handwriting screening assessment is within 15 to 20 minutes. The ACH covers many aspects of handwriting including Postural control, hand control, pre-writing skills, letter or number formation, bilateral hand skills, and other considerations. Treatment of dyscrapia. Firstly is grasping skills. Secondly is play dot activity or therapy. These activities to increase arm strength where they can pull stuff apart with their hand. Thirdly is wheelbarrow walking. It's when they are laying on their belly with their hands down and holding their legs up and having them walk with their hands. They are putting all the weight on their hands to help strengthen. Lastly is stress and do mazes activities. These activities can help child to develop fine motor control. Mazes can also help child practice staying within a designated space. Treatment for dyspraxia. Firstly, is practice of fine motor skill, which is rubber bands on the bottle activities. Secondly, developing hand eyes coordination and bilateral right left coordination, which is throwing and catching a ball activity. Thirdly is developing balance.